Josh and Patty, the Saggy Bottom Bunch, Little Pixie sitting in her donut up front here. And, well, the table not as messy as it was. Mm -hmm. Well, let me put this down. It's heavy. <laughs> so this is today's story. Yes, today's story. I finished up Shabby Chic Emma, on my spring through summer, almost into fall, like September journal. And I felt so good about that. When I got up this morning, I went down on the floor to that little bit of a mess I had here. You know, a few things that I took off the table that I wanted to sort through and actually put them away somewhere. So I sat down and I put a few things away, but the big tub with the October, November, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and fun things like that, Dia de los Muertos and a few other things, big tub full of journaling supplies down there. I was like, hmm, I should really sort through that, right? So I took everything out of that tub and spread it across the floor. <laughs> and I started saying, well, let me group these things together and the soft goods over here and the ribbons over there and the tool over there, and maybe the stickers over there. And see what I had and get it a little bit organized. Yes. Then what happened? Oh, so then Mr. Possum got up and we had our breakfast and all that and going on and I had a date to meet the sisters for lunch. It was almost time to leave. We have to leave early because it's a drive halfway across the state. Well, good thing I live in a little state, but it was still a, a drive, right? So I was like, well, I really don't have enough time, you know, to do a good job of finishing up what was on the floor. So I just had a little bit of time. So oh, I had promised Pixie that I'd do a little bit of a flip through of her little tiny composition notebook here, her altered composition notebook that she calls her art journal. Mm -hmm. So I did a little... Uh, hashtag shorts on that. I'll link that below if you haven't seen that. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, then it was time to go. So I was out having lunch with some of the sisters. And of course, <laughs> the one sister who is cleaning out her house. <laughs> yes, keeps giving me things, right? So now I have to sort through it and clean out my house. But that's okay. She always gives me really nice things. So I want to share with you what she gave me. And this time, I'm not even going to say my sister gave me her trash. I know I have another video. Same sister, but no, she's not giving me trash. She went to a book sale and got me some really nice things. Well, she lent me a couple of books just to read, but she gave me a couple that I can cut up. So I'm really excited about that. And what else? Let's see. I was thinking, hmm, yes, because I was actually out today <laughs> working on my cross stitch while traveling in the car. And I was thinking about my October journal. Let me get that. Now, I know it has a haunted house on the front. But that doesn't mean that every page in it, you know, has something about Halloween. Just a lot of fall things, a lot of October things, and probably very little about the actual day of Halloween. Now, there's, there's a couple of things I want to put in here. So I have like the fall fairs and fall travels, you know, and little fall art and things like that going on a train. See, there's a skull there, but this is this is about a health journaling there. And this is Halloween, but it's actually eating. <laughs> it's a foodie thing. And I have flowers, and this definitely looks like Halloween. Well, anyway, there's actually several things that I want to put in here. Now, the question is, Now that it's November, do I want to keep working in this journal? I feel like I want to put in some more October things that I haven't journaled about. Now the question is, do I want to keep working in the October journal 
or put this aside till next year and get out the November journal, which is also partially journaled in from last year, maybe the year before that, yeah. I have some empty pages in here and I have, how many signatures are here? I don't even know. Um, two signatures. The first signature is almost done and the second signature is just started. But I feel like I have so many things that I could journal about that I could fill this up. And that would be quite an accomplishment after just finishing up Emma, if I just worked on this for a few days or a few weeks or however long it takes me, even if it's the rest of the month, and I journal about the rest of October adventures and some November things I want to journal about, yes, and finish this one up. Just cosmically smash anything and everything that I feel like journaling about that has to do with the fall and the holidays and travels and maybe even a couple of things left over from the summer, right? And just fill this up. This is such a fun journal. Just fill this up. This is already so chunky, I know. Well, hmm. I don't know. That, that That's how I feel right now. Yes. I've got to finish our trip to Mystic Seaport. I've got, let's see, someplace else we travel to that I have to put in here. A couple more food things, Dia de los Muertos, a couple of Halloween things, a couple of memory things, and yeah. What do you think? <laughs> well, this is just journaling with Possum Patty. So I think I'm gonna spend some more time just journaling. Now I do have a couple of things I want to get into some other journals. But like I did with Emma, I did Emma for a couple of days and then I might have done something else and then I went back to Emma and then did something else and I went back to Emma and I finished her up. I might make this the focus of the rest of the month It'll be fun. I'll be sharing with you some of the adventures we had, you know, from late summer through November and just some fun things I want to journal about. So what do you think about that? Let me know. <laughs> Come on along. Let's look at what I got from the sisters first. 50 cents. <laughs> I got a Little Mary Engelbright book that is adorable. Look at this, take good care. Of course, black and white, black and white. And I guess this is like a little gift book that you can give someone when they're not feeling well. Nice people like you don't deserve to be sick. So this is just one little way. Look at the adorable illustration there. It says a case of the vapors to help you feel better. Laughter is the best medicine. And tell you how often you're thought about day after day. Love these illustrations. Without you around here, things don't seem to go right. <laughs> a little chicken soup at the bottom, a little chicken soup for the soul. I feel dejected and glum. So this is really cute now. Hmm. I'm going to have to make a decision because I really like the size of this little book. And should I take it apart and make a little mini journal? I have a lot of little mini journals, don't I? But they're so fun, little mini journals, I know. I could take this apart and put a couple of signatures in here and use these little illustrations on the pages or maybe some of the words, but have some spaces for other kinds of journaling. So I'm going to be thinking about this. Oh, where's that little box? Remember, I wanted to make a little journal to put in this box. Uh, this is a little small for that, though. Yeah, I want a journal that's going to be at least this size. 
Do I need to start a little container of little mini journals that I want to make? <laughs> I might have to do that. I might have to do that. I had some other little things somewhere. Where are they? <laughs> I thought I cleaned off the table. This was to be my dictionary of useful words for possums. I know that's a hedgehog, but we're going to change that to possums. <laughs> and now I've got this little one. And I had the little washi tape boxes. I have an empty box. And I'll put these in here. And somewhere I was saving little tiny washi tape boxes to make journals out of. And when I was cleaning out that tub, I also came across these little Halloween journals. And let's put those in there. And then if I find anything else, I'll add that to here. Maybe I should label it. <laughs> Maybe I should label it. Mini journal fodder. Mini journal fodder or mini journal ideas, or mini journal, what should we call this? What can we call this? What can we call this? How about, let's make <laughs> mini journals. Let's make mini journals. All right, I have a few more things. When I come across them, put them in here. All right, let's put this aside for right now. Now, this is the book that I am not allowed to cut up. No, <laughs> but she gave it to me. She wanted me to go through it and read it and maybe share a little bit of it with you because it's about communicating with the color. So I said, okay, I can't cut it. She said, no, don't cut it. She wants it back. <laughs> she wants it back. Oh, you might know this book that I read at the end of the video sometimes. This is another one she gave me that I'm supposed to just read a little bit to you and then give it back. Yeah, but I told her I, I want to read a little bit more of that one before I give it back. <laughs> She's waiting for that one. So this is... The importance of color in the marketplace, color schemes, color awareness, seeing color, color perception, color families. Oh, I bet you this is very interesting. Oh, look at the stones over here. Look at the heart stones. Oh, I love it already. I want to cut it up. <laughs> I want to cut it up. Now, this is like for commercial artists, I believe. Yeah, because it's a Pantone. Pantone, if you're familiar with that. Color schemes, monochromatic. Wow. Feeling color. Oh, wow. The colors that we see are invariably influenced by what we feel. From the time of early infancy, when our eyes first perceive color, we start to formulate feelings about those colors that invariably carry over into adult life. Some experts believe that humans have ancient wisdom that throughout eons of evolutionary history, going back to the beginning of time, we have an associative memory concerning Space, form, patterns, and colors. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be some interesting reading. Oh, look at that. Very colorful, I would say. Seeing color. Wow, stimulating red. The pituitary gland really springs into action when it sees red. I didn't know that. <laughs> A chemical message is sent to your adrenal medulla and releases the hormone epinephrine. I didn't know that. This alters your body chemistry, causing you to breathe more rapidly, increases your blood pressure, pulse rate, heartbeat, your flow of 
uh, adrenaline and GSR galvanic skin response, a fancy term for perspiration and the basis of lie detector tests. These reactions are physiological and we have no control over the effect. As a result, red is indelibly imprinted on the human mind to connect with the excitement and high energy, says provocative. Ooh. Yes, I'm, I'm going to read this book. <laughs> hmm. If you're interested, I'll come back and share some of this with you. But right away, I'm thinking orange. Temperature-wise, orange is seen as the hottest of all colors. Now, you think that would have been the red. Friendly, vital orange. You know how people do their little glue books? And they collect, you know, they collect a variety of things that are all like in yellows or in oranges or in reds. Wow. And I never had the impulse to do that. No. But you know what? <laughs> are you thinking what I'm thinking here? Hmm. I can do a little glue book. I can't cut this up, but I have plenty of other sources to get things from. With these colors, with a little bit about each color on it, sort of like a little color educational journal. Hmm. Wow. Neutrals. White. Serene, and then it's, then it's got the little color families here. How the different colors work with each other. Muted tones. Capricious. Sensual. Wow, that's neon, right? Powerful. It would really be interesting now when I go through a magazine after I study this book. <laughs> <laughs> to find how these colors were actually used in some of these ads. And if I find something with this color family, yes, put it in a section of the journal with that title. Delicate, yes, delicate. Playful, wow, yes, definitely playful. Mm -hmm. Playful, energetic. Classic, festive. All right, I'm not allowed to cut this up, but <laughs> I'm getting a lot of inspiration from it. This is by the executive director of the Pantone Color Institute hmm. and founder of the Eisman Center for Color Information and Training. Beatrice Eisman, the color guru. Wow. It's an awesome book. Awesome, awesome. All right, I got to study that. <laughs> I got to study that. Now, I am allowed to cut this one up. She paid a dollar or less for this. <laughs> Gorgeous, isn't it? Entering the grove. So right away, I'm like, oh, trees. Trees. Oh, and it's a beautiful book. I know I hate to cut these things up, but I feel it just gives them new life. Entering the grove. I don't know what it's about besides a grove is trees. Like the trees, we are visitors, guests of earth. The light shines down and a bud breaks. Branches give way before us. A book's leaves open. And our eyes look, look again. We are a grove, companions spared to be on earth at the same time. The trees, though not our kind, are kin, elder relatives standing to greet us. I call the trees the standing people. Yes, the standing people. Definitely our kin. The tree of all trees, the ravens, a woman named Tree. I'm just going to take a peek inside here because I really haven't. Costa Rica, I was here 
Monte Verde, the cloud forest, that's what it looks like. More Costa Rica. Oh, beautiful illustrations. Not a lot of not a lot of words so far. Birch and dogwood. Hmm. Look at this. Alders. Wow, these are very mysterious, aren't they? New Hampshire and Costa Rica. Hmm. California and Yellowstone. Oh, here's some words. The tree of all trees. Oh, I love this. I love this. Now, I like this paper. This is like handmade paper here. This paper is very shiny. <laughs> I love this paper. The ravens. Oh, there's stories. The ravens. The woman named Tree. More alders. All right, so it looks like there's lots of beautiful pictures of trees. <laughs> Ooh, isn't that gorgeous? Lines, maples, and oh, and of course, autumn. Yes, we just finished with that. And then there's stories. It's a creaky book. <laughs> Can you hear it? It's making noise. I do love this paper. And look, here's a big blank sheet. <gasps> I love this paper. Well, you're definitely going to be seeing more of this. This must be a lot of winter stuff. Fall, winter. More stories. And that's that, yeah. Plant a thousand trees or save just one. The earth needs more trees. Oh, and lots of blank pages to use too. Okay. Oh, that's not blank. <laughs> but that one is. All right, I will be going through here and enjoying the illustrations and probably reading some of these stories. If I find a good one, I'll read it to you at the end of one of the videos, okay? So one to cut up, one to study, one to make a mini journal from, and look what I got, 2024 Holiday Share the Joy Amazon Kids Gift Book. And I love to journal with this. If you're not familiar with these, they have the cutest characters. Every year, there's a different artist, and they usually have an artist. Yeah, here. They usually have a Meet the Artist in the back, and this year's artist is Laura C. Moyer, and she is an illustrator and designer working from a cabin in the woods in Pennsylvania. She's constantly inspired by the outdoors and the natural world. She loves to work with fun and bright color palettes and finding the balance between simple shapes and interesting details and texture. And these are her characters. Looks like a fox, a raccoon, a bear, a mouse, and an owl. And when you go through, there's just some really fun illustrations that you can put into your winter or holiday journals. And then there's also these extra little pages, like you can use these tags on a page. And then you got these little tiny ones everywhere. So you look at this magic forest coloring. The fox has a paintbrush. That would be so cute with the mushrooms and little illustrations at the bottom of the page. I can do a slow flip through this one. The kids love to see these catalogs, but I love to see these pages. And there's like little games to play. Draw four fun surprises for your best friend. Do a little sketch on there or just use these on your journal page. 
and sometimes you can find them throughout the journal. They tend to pop up here and there. So here's a coloring page, Fox's painting. Here's some stickers. There's some stickers. They're so cute. See, throughout the, the catalog, see? There's just these really fun illustrations. Oh, here's some more stickers. And say it with me. It's, it's the morning, morning double clock. A word find. That's cute. Oh, they got a possum. They got a possum this year. Oh, 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 oh. Look, 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 look. There's a possum. Oh. And I was just complaining how they never have possums. <laughs> they always have hedgehogs, which don't live in this country. See the hedgehog? <laughs> and they never show the possums. That is a possum. Yeah, pink tail. Oh. There's a possum. Is that the only possum in the whole story? Did you see a possum on another page? I couldn't have missed a possum. How could I have missed a possum? See, it's not there. All right. There's a possum in here. There's a possum. Here's a little maze. Ah, oh, wicked dolls. Love it. <laughs> okay, so this is fodder for winter journaling. And what else? Well, one sister is still not feeling well, and and she gave us the gifts that she was going to bring along and give to us when we went to see a show in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yes, yeah, so isn't this the cutest bag? You know, this has got to go on a journal page. Look at this. I love that. And inside were these little purses, and each of us got one with our initial embroidered on it and they all have these little little rhinestone lions on them because we were going to see Daniel in the lion's den so isn't that adorable yes and yeah we didn't get to go we didn't get to go and she didn't even get to come to this lunch. She she sent she sent these things over <laughs> over to us. We didn't get to see her. No, and oh, that little purse has two different straps. It's got this uh, wide shoulder strap, and it's got a little leather shoulder strap. I thought that was interesting. Okay, but I want to use this in a journal. And I'm thinking in the tea journal. I'm thinking in the tea journal. And journal about today. This is really strange, yes. I had these little tiny boxes from washi tape that I was going to make little tiny journals out of. And you know, I took that off the table the other day and I went through everything that was in there. I didn't see them in the box, but maybe, maybe they're in another pile. <laughs> maybe they're in another pile, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go through this pile here. There's another pile here on the table of stuff that wasn't even in the box. Hmm. Oh, well, I'll come across them. <laughs> and that's okay. Everything shows up eventually. And speaking of showing up eventually, <laughs> I found my Nightmare Before Christmas fabric in the Halloween tub over there. And this is going to be just perfect because my grandniece and nephew went out for Halloween as Jack and Sally. Yes. <laughs> this is going on a page in that journal. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I love this. I love this. And there was also this skull. This is a little creepy. <laughs> I think this one's a little creepy. I mean, I like it. I like it. I, I love The Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> I love fun creepy. Yeah, not gory, yucky stuff, but fun creepy like The Nightmare Before Christmas. But this is definitely going in the journal. And I don't know, maybe that'll be one of the next pages that I do. And just, <laughs> just to go along with it, yes, I found my gravestone rubbings. These are actual rubbings from very old gravestones, yes, on rice paper. This is rice paper and crayon. So I don't know, I'm going to do a page. I might put one of these in there. Got a couple different ones. Faces and what's this? I'm not going to go through them now, but the design, designs off the side of a gravestone. Yeah, so I'm going to have more fun in that October journal, and I'm, I'm just going to put everything in there and finish that up. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, thanks for coming along for today's little share. No, I didn't get any journaling done, but I got a lot of journaling ideas. I have a plan, which could always change. And I've got some new things to go through and look at. Thank you for allowing me to share my new books with you. Yes, my new ideas with you. <laughs> Happy junk journaling. Bye-bye. Found them. <laughs> little tiny boxes to make little tiny mini journals. I found them under the table in a basket, in a bag. <laughs> I'm going to take them out and keep all the mini journal things together. Oh, but I got this precious little washi tape down here too. See, I hate cleaning off the table because then I can't find anything and I'm likely not to use it in a journal if it's under the table or in the closet or on the shelf. But if it's on the table, I'm more likely to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see what else is in here. <laughs>